Good day. My name is Martin Schweiger and I will today walk you through a patent application that has been done using the Cartent automated drafting tool. I call it a patent drafting robot. What you see here on the screen is the user interface. This is where all the data is input that is used to generate the output. The output would be a word file, a doc file that you can edit and adapt to what you want. You see three fields here. The upper one is for the invention disclosure. That is a full text that you receive from the inventor or you have drafted it yourself. The lower window here is for the patent claims. Very often patent attorneys start with drafting the patent claims. And then we have a window on the right side and that comes with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sections. I choose the terms section because that one is used to display the result of the analysis of the patent claims or the invention disclosure. Let's start with a typical case. I have here an invention disclosure. Um, it is the Twitter patent. You will find it is a bit famous in the internet. These are the claims that have been taken from there and then some parts of the description and also two figures. I start with this because this is an easy example. So let's first copy paste the claims into the claims window of the patent robot. Copy, switch over and paste. What I do is I alter the claim one because the way it is drafted is very short. That will later give problems with the reference numerals. You will understand that at a later time. This is the claim that I have prepared. It comes with steps. I know steps are not really wanted when you do a method claim, but for the case here and for explaining the patent robot, this is quite useful. Then I switch the analyze switch on here. You can toggle between edit and analyze. I do that and it's done. Now, next step, we assign reference numerals to the terms that are here. And you see the parser module has identified a few terms that could use some reference numerals. For example, scrollable list. <coughs> it's here. See? And it would receive a reference numeral one. Then I have the list displaying step, which is here. It's not in the list because otherwise it would be fully underlined and you don't find it here. So I add it as a new term and I use this intermediate field here for inserting the new term because I can still edit it. And if you look, there is a space character here, which is not useful when you create a reference numerals list. So I delete that one. Then the term would be added to the list above and it gets a reference numeral. Then we have the content items that need a reference numeral. Then we have a receiving input step. It's underlined here, so I know it would be in this list. Here, see? And it will get a reference numeral. Then receiving input associated with the scroll command. Yeah, the scroll command will get a reference numeral. Then the input, yeah, we give it also a reference numeral. You have it here. Then a trigger displaying step is not fully underlined, but only trigger is underlined. And also the step is underlined and I use my intermediate field. See, there's a space at the beginning. I don't want to be that space in the list and I click it here. So a scrollable refresh trigger. Yeah, we need that one response to a determining event of determining based on that a determining event here then we have a list refreshing step it's not in the list here ah, i wanted to show you something if you are very sure that or the whole text that you have marked here with your mouse is already good then you just click on that button here and it would also be added into the list and get the reference numeral. All these have reference numerals. Then we have for the first instruction here, click a second instruction. Mm -hmm. 
then fully display. There's also an easy way to see whether all terms have a correct reference numeral. Just click here and the numbering will be inserted into the claims. See, all the reference numerals are here. Just a little edit for the better appearance. Yeah, looks good. We are all good. We can now add in a figure description here if we have one. If not, then we just click on generate description. Yeah, we save the claims. We get to the second page where we have options for generating the description. You see, I have here one credit for express generation and two interactive generation credits. I'm using the express only here. And there is a pre-selection done here. Some options can only be activated if you are in the interactive mode. I'm just happy with what is here. And I click generate patent draft. And what you see here is the patent draft. The patent draft has three types of text. One type which is yellow, one type which is green, and then there are a few in italics. And of course between brackets. The text in italic letters is an instruction to you so that you know what is following and what you are expected to do. This is like a work instruction for the reader. So the green text is what comes from the input that we have just generated. It is uh, the patent claims in our case. The yellow text has been generated by the patent drafting robot. And the yellow text needs to be edited by you and you need to input a few thoughts so that the whole thing is made better. I prefer to do this in the word file outside of content, but you can do everything here and then go back and revalidate and so on and so on. But I just export it here, export as a doc, and what you see is here the description. The yellow and the green text have been removed. You have now a full patent application plus a reference numeral list. And I put this example into the same post that I generate for the video that I have just taken. Thank you. Goodbye.